Believe it or not, I'm not the biggest fan of emulation. As a retro game collector, being able to grab a game off the shelf and pop it into a console is probably my favorite part of the hobby. And I said as much in my previous video on the analog pocket. And it was in the comments section of that video where I was somewhat rudely told that there are devices out there that are a quarter of the price and can do as much or more than the analog pocket. And then I was introduced to this, the Anbernic RG35XX, a neat little handheld that can play basically everything up to the original Sony PlayStation. And this was pretty intriguing to me because the PlayStation is probably my favorite console and I don't play it nearly as much as I would like. So I decided to give the Anbernic a try and pick one up. And in the few weeks I've been playing with the RG35XX, not only have I come to the conclusion that it's an awesome little device, but I've also found a new approach to emulation that captures the essence of what I love about retro games and physical media, which for me, made this the perfect portable PlayStation. We can't talk about what makes the Embernic great without talking about its price. On the official website, you can pick one up for a base price of $56, and with tax and shipping, you're looking at around 70 bucks. Or you can pick one up from a third-party seller on Amazon for basically the same price and have it arrive as soon as the next day, which is what I did. We also can't talk about the RG35XX without mentioning the Miu Mini, a device that was so popular last year it inspired Ambernick to basically copy it. And to say the RG35XX is a ripoff of the Miu Mini is a bit of an understatement. But thankfully, they did make some changes. The RG35XX is quite a bit larger, trading portability for comfort. The size feels really good in the hand and isn't too far off from something like a Game Boy Pocket. And don't worry because despite its size, it's still extremely portable. When I ordered the RG35XX, I also picked up a Miu Mini and a Miu Mini Plus around the same time. But I was drawn to the Ambernic because of the buttons, especially the shoulder buttons. They're just so much more satisfying than the ones on the Miu consoles, which I found to be kind of mushy and even sometimes unresponsive. The D-pad, however, isn't perfect, and I ended up in the unfortunate group of people who received a unit that's prone to accidental left and right inputs. Fortunately, there is a pretty quick mod you can do that fixes the D-pad in a matter of minutes. I'll drop a link to it in the description below if you end up having the same issue. I was very impressed with the overall build quality. The plastic feels great and comes in three color options, a clear white, a very Game Boy looking gray, and a clear purple. I think the gray one is probably my favorite of the three, but I appreciate that companies are trying to bring back that see-through aesthetic from the 90s. It's pretty nostalgic. The screen is great, it's not as immediately impressive as the one on the analog pocket, but it definitely gets the job done. And the speaker, well, it's, it's garbage, which is a bummer because it's really the only part of the hardware that I find disappointing. Luckily, there is a headphone jack if you want to avoid the shitty speaker altogether. But again, for well under $100, I think the RG35XX is punching way above its price point. It's got HDMI out, USB-C charging, dual SD card slots, a pretty decent battery, a vibration motor, controller support. Again, like, I'm just extremely impressed with this little device. I don't think you'll find a better handheld at this price point. When it comes to the software experience, we have a few options, which is great. The stock OS that comes with the device is fine. If you want to just open it up, turn it on and play some games, then yeah, it'll totally get the job done. However, if you're a bit more adventurous, there are two custom operating systems that I definitely recommend checking out. First is Garlic OS. This one is great if you're a fan of customization. It's built around RetroArch, so you have a ton of options available to customize your emulation experience. It automatically creates save states whenever you quit a game. It supports way more consoles than the stock OS. It allows you to over and underclock the system. And best of all, it supports custom themes, like this cute cat one that I've been using recently. It's great, and I can't recommend it enough. I'll put a link down below for a setup guide, and trust me, it's worth taking the half an hour or whatever it takes to get it all set up. 
And then finally, there's MinUI. While I do love Garlic OS, I actually found myself gravitating towards MinUI a bit more recently. In a lot of ways, it's the complete opposite of Garlic OS. MinUI is all about simplicity, it gives you just enough options to customize the gameplay experience, and that's it. No custom themes, no box art, and a limited selection of consoles to emulate. It's clean, simple, and straight to the point. Again, I'll drop a link below to the MinUI GitHub where you can find installation instructions and check it out. Honestly, any of the options are great, but for now I think Garlic OS is still my favorite. I just can't say no to a good cat theme. Like I said earlier, this thing can pretty much emulate everything up until the first PlayStation. And yeah, I can confirm that everything from NES to Game Boy Advance all play just fine. But I really don't care about any of that. I already have plenty of ways to play those games, whether it's on a modded Game Boy or my analog pocket. I'm here for the PlayStation, and the RG35XX delivers. Basically every game that I tried worked great. Except for Ape Escape, because it requires analog sticks and the 35XX just doesn't have any. I've had a blast sitting on my couch, playing Crash Bandicoot, or laying in bed with Final Fantasy VII or Castlevania. With the RG35XX, I'm definitely playing more PS1 games than I have in quite a while. However, on its own, the RG35XX doesn't do anything to mitigate the real issues I have with emulation. With emulation, I've always felt disconnected from the experience. The convenience of having hundreds of games on an SD card is great, but it comes at a price. It's far too easy to just give up on a game and try another one. And like I mentioned in my analog pocket video, there's a bit of friction that's missing from the whole experience. So I decided to try something different this time. And let me tell you, it's made a world of difference for me. First, I only installed ROMs for games that I actually own. I already have a large enough backlog of games to get through, so I really don't need to be distracted by anything else. But I took this a step further. I didn't just download ROMs from some website. I actually went ahead and made backups from my own disks by ripping each ROM one by one. Now for most people, this probably seems like a colossal waste of time, but for me, it was a key part in feeling a sense of connection to these games. Even though the data is identical to a file I could download online, I know that these ROMs came from my games, right off of my shelf. I voluntarily introduced friction into the equation to have a better sense of connection. The next thing that was important to me was that I didn't want my time playing these games to be trapped on the console. Because playing these games on original hardware, on my CRT, is still my preferred experience. So being able to transfer these saves from my PS1 was a non-negotiable. And that's where this little guy came in handy, the MemCard Pro. Now, I'd already been using this with my PlayStation because PlayStation memory cards can barely hold any games on them, and I've got close to 100 games in my collection, so buying more memory cards was just not going to be sustainable. The MemCard Pro generates virtual memory cards and stores them on an SD card. So depending on the size of your SD card, you can easily have hundreds or even thousands of virtual memory cards all in one little package. These virtual memory cards work just like other memory cards, so that means you can easily copy saves from your childhood right onto the SD card. And that's what brings us all the way back to the RG35XX. You can easily take your saves from the MemCard Pro's SD card, drop them onto a computer, and then copy them onto the save folder of your 35XX's SD card. And bam, now you can easily play all your childhood saves anywhere. And you can even transfer your progress back to your PS1 memory cards if you want to. These two things were a game changer for me. For the first time, I didn't feel like I was just emulating. I felt like I was playing games, enjoying them, having a great time. Thanks to the time I've put in with the RG35XX, I have a very different perspective on emulation. Like anything else, you get out what you put into it. And I've finally found a system that works for me. And it's something that I hope to try out with other consoles in the future. The RG35XX isn't anything revolutionary. It's not like it's the first handheld that can emulate PS1 games. In fact, there's plenty of devices out there that can easily do that and more, emulating PS2, Dreamcast, GameCube, and beyond. But for its price, the size, build quality, ease of use, 
are all incredible. You owe it to yourself to pick one up. Because like I said before, I think I've found the perfect portable PlayStation.